about our Wordle uh, <laughs> approach right. to the Wordle and I what like words that. is there. Give us a secret. Audio. Audio. Start, Start with, with the word audio because it's got a, a, quite a few vowels in I it. I like you that. You know which ones are in or not. Yes. Which exactly. ones are yellow or green. Hey, big day here today. It is. Because of this beautiful, oh my goodness. this beautiful, beautiful this course that we, we have here in La Jolla. <laughs> I mean, how awesome is this? Uh, Farmers Insurance Open That's begins right. today. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some uh, new golfers on the tour tuning in right now. Congratulations. That's right. Uh, but they're also looking outside and seeing this uh, thick blanket of fog. Always happens, right? right? Whenever we have a big day ahead, we see some changes <laughs> in the forecast. Take a look at what we've got outside right now. This is your visibility map that shows where we're limited. Now, here's the thing. Improvements have slowly been taking place, but by the time we get to sunrise, 9 a.m. Well, sunrise is going to be in about 45 minutes or so, but then closer to between sunrise and 9 a.m., we're going to see those more significant improvements as far as visibility goes. So you can expect that into the rest of the day. What we're looking at beyond 9 a.m., mostly sunny skies out there. Upper 60 degree temperatures along your coast, low 70s inland. It's going to be overall a very mild day. Santa Ana winds are dying down as we head through the morning and afternoon. Just one crash that I want to take you up to. This is up just way up to the north in the San Clemente area. You got the exit ramp from the 5 southbound at exit 73 to Avenida del Presidente. That lane is blocked with a stalled vehicle. They're working to clear. Back to you guys. Well, this morning, a local woman is leading the charge in a lawsuit over the pro football team that once called San Diego home. Yeah, she's suing the Chargers and the NFL over the team's move to Los Angeles, what, six years ago now? Right, yeah, it was 2016 when they played their last game in San Diego. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol joining us live to uh, explain what's behind this lawsuit. Good morning, Dana Marie. Good morning to you both. The Chargers back in the headlines this morning. Both the team and the NFL are being sued over moving to Los Angeles, saying that the relocation policies were not followed. Now, we did reach out and speak to the attorney spearheading this case, who says that the Chargers did not negotiate in good faith with the city of San Diego. We had four mayors that did everything they possibly could to keep the Chargers here. Uh, expanded Qualcomm, gave them the ticket guarantee, set up advisory committees and, and citizens committees to look for options. Now that was attorney Michael Aguirre who says the lawsuit is about one thing and it's about recovering money San Diego lost. He filed the suit Monday in San Diego Superior Court on behalf of San Diego resident Ruth Hendricks. The suit alleges that even with the team making millions in taxpayer dollars and despite numerous efforts from city leaders to keep them in San Diego, the Chargers owner Dean Spanos had already made up his mind to move the team by Los Angeles by 2006. This is what they're saying in the court. Case. Now, Geary tells us they're using a similar lawsuit involving the city of St. Louis and the Rams as their outline, where the city won more than $700 million in a payout from the team's move to Los Angeles in 2016. Geary says they're going after taxpayer money to support the team while in San Diego and for hundreds of millions in unjust enrichment. Now, he did reach out to the Chargers and the NFL. We're waiting to hear back from them. The defendant is still waiting to be served on the suit. Meanwhile, a preliminary uh, court case is being scheduled for July. That's on the books. For any more information, you can head to CBSA.com. Of course, we'll be following this lawsuit as so many people are still you know, maybe even bitter about the Chargers moving to Los Angeles. Of course, this one woman is. I'm Dana Marie McNichol in San Diego for CBSA. Yeah, of course, San Diego missing having an NFL team Absolutely. here at home. Dana Marie, thank you. After a nearly six-hour public hearing, the Chula Vista City Council is rejecting building a controversial psychiatric hospital in East Lake. Scripps Health and Acadia Healthcare, which is a for-profit company, proposed a 120-bed facility at the East Lake Business Park. Residents in the area launched a fierce battle against it, raising concerns over community safety. They also called out allegations of patient abuse and mismanagement at other facilities run by a Acadia nationwide. Supporters of the project say this facility is critically needed to provide mental health care in the South County. Well, today, the life of beloved South Bay athlete Micah Pietla Wiggs will be honored. There will be a memorial today at the East Lake High Baseball Field starting at 6 p.m. The community is invited to attend this. The 21 year old was killed in a car crash over the weekend uh, near the border. Investigators are still looking into what caused that crash.
Turning now to Omicron, it is spreading quickly across San Diego, hitting our county pretty hard. And now the variant has mutated into a sub variant that could be even more contagious. This one is called BA2 or stealth Omicron. Medical experts say it's so new they don't know much about it, including if the COVID vaccine is effective against it. You may not be completely protected from getting infected, and transmitting it to others. We certainly learned that with Omicron. So BA2 has already been detected in 40 different countries, including here in the U.S. While it has not been confirmed in San Diego yet, experts say they do believe it's here. Workers across our state could soon get another round of paid COVID sick leave. State lawmakers proposed several tax changes alongside Governor Gavin Newsom. And this plan would end some tax increases on businesses a year early. They had been set to expire at the end of 2022. It also calls for more state investment in a business grant program. The changes amount to about $6 billion going back to California businesses. If approved by the legislature, employers would be required to provide one week of paid time off and another week if someone tests positive for COVID. County leaders are addressing a possible police officer shortage in San Diego. Retirements, resignations, normal recruitment issues, and vaccine mandates continue to impact law enforcement staffing levels in our region. As of this month, 15 San Diego Police Department employees received a notice of termination for not being fully vaccinated. There are vaccine mandates and there is there's reason to be concerned. While we haven't seen a mass exodus, it hasn't been enforced yet. And once it is, it potentially could have a mass exodus. And then what do you do if you can't cover all the patrols? County Supervisor Joel Anderson says that the Sheriff's Department has a mutual aid agreement to secure all of San Diego County if and when San Diego police are unable to. But he says applications to the Sheriff's Department were down 25% last year, and he doesn't want the county to be caught off guard. Well, as you know, today's a big day for golf fans and for people who really enjoy a good party, because that's also what it is. <laughs> We're talking about the opening round of the Farmers Insurance Open starting this morning, and the fans get to be back here. CBS 8's Chris Crow live at Torrey Pines with all the excitement here. We were talking earlier about how uh, some of the fog, some of the moisture out mm -hmm. there can maybe affect some of the tea, tea times, uh, which begin at 9 a.m., right? Yeah, tee times are going to start both north and south course 9 a.m. Right now, again, we are focusing on the conditions. We were talking about that just a little while ago. And remember, the U.S. Open, the last tournament played here at Torrey Pines, we didn't get to see the north course, and yet it's all ready to go here for a PGA tournament. So I want to bring in now a name you might recognize, but not the person you're thinking of, <laughs> John Howard, who, again, is the assistant golf operations director here at Torrey Pines. And, John, the conditions, that is what you guys try to be in control of. Obviously, Mother Nature comes in. We were just talking about the fog, having a little bit of moisture in the air. What does that do to kind of increase the difficulty here at Torrey Pines for these professional golfers? Well, the fog definitely is going to add a different layer of complexity to the golf course. Um, you know, when it gets foggy, it's definitely one of those things that makes the air a little bit denser, might not be as easy for the ball to carry. Um, but one thing it does do is bring a little bit moisture back into the greens. And for us, we'd, we'd like to dry them down so it's a little firmer, a little faster. Um, but our superintendent, Devin Cullen, has done an amazing job of getting the golf course where it is today. And you guys have done amazing work. The North Course, again, was shut down for the U.S. Open. It was essentially a, a parking lot. And now seven months later, fully operational, back to its uh, really illustrious kind of reputation there. What goes into that, getting it ready so quickly? Well, you know, we were actually closed for about two months um, after the U.S. Open. We opened up just about September 1st. And um, for us, we had a few fairways that we really needed to pay some close attention to, uh, specifically 9, 10, 13. That's where a lot of the infrastructure was. Uh, but for us, we did obviously a lot of sodding, but a lot of care and, uh, you know, special attention went into making sure that the golf course could be where it was at today. Another thing that we love to highlight when we have the farmers in town is that uh, unlike a lot of the venues on, on the tournament schedule, this is a municipal golf course through mm -hmm. and through. We have so many people who are able to come and play where the pros play. So now that we're, you know, in another week here at the Farmers Insurance Open, how proud are you of your team, again, being able to put on this world-class event 
uh, at such an amazing place. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a great point. I am super proud of our, our team. I mean, it's it's amazing what city staff can do when we have a goal in mind. And, you know, each and every year we make sure that these golf courses are not only ready for uh, the professionals that play out here, but for all of the, the residents of San Diego and the people that come here from around the world. Um, you know, we are definitely uh, looking for more people to come onto the team. Um, we, we've got a lot of positions that are open, but I'm really proud of the, the work that people have done to, to get us where we are today. And John, you got to help me settle something because some of the players that were in the media event thought maybe the conditions were harder that day compared to what the pros get. It, is the rough a little bit longer there and then you guys cut it down or are they just complaining about maybe playing in harder conditions? <laughs> no, well, I, you know, there are a lot of things that we do prior to the event um, that that could be perceived as a little bit harder. But, you know, the detail work is really coming into play right now. But as we get to the weekend, uh, these pros are definitely going to have a tough test out there. That's awesome. And that's what we love to see, a great challenge so that we can have, mm. you know, that champion that really can, you know, get on there and say that they earned it. So, John, again, thank you so much for everything, giving us that insight. Again, so much work, guys, goes into just the day-to-day, -day getting the course ready. Uh, so, again, really can't thank John and his team enough yeah. here, again, trying to make sure that everything is ready to put San Diego on that international. Yeah. And, they, and they want to make sure the media is challenged, too, out there, Chris. <laughs> I mean, they want you to be in tip-top shape for this tourney, too, pal. <laughs> Did you lose a few balls and, and out there? When I said settle a bet, it was basically it was basically just me trying to convince myself that it was harder for <laughs> me it. than it would be for the pros. That, okay. Just being completely honest. There we go. <laughs> All this right. is our, our handy golfer, though. I mean, you know a lot of things about this sport. So Kid in a candy store out there. Have a blast out there. <laughs> Enjoy it, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Let's Thank check you. in with Evan and see how the uh, forecast is shaping up for this morning at Farmers. Yeah. As you heard from Chris out there, the fog is going to cause some trouble as we head through the morning. Sunrise expected in about a half hour or so, and as that sun starts to come up, it will do its part to help clear out that fog. But the problem is because of the winter season that we're in now, we have a pretty low sun angle right now, and a low sun angle makes it take a little bit longer uh, for that fog to clear out. If we were in the midst of summer, it would likely burn off a lot quicker. Instead, though, we have limited visibility to start off the morning. Santa Ana winds blowing across the mountaintops toward the foothills, really only affecting that uh, microclimate for now as winds start to die down. We're looking at highs in the upper 60s along the coast, low 70s inland, 50 across the mountaintops. There are your winds. You notice those double digit speeds across the mountains, but once you move off toward the coastline, we are in the low single digits for the most part. Up in Oceanside though, 11 mile per hour gusts. Julian 24 and Mount Laguna at 22 mile per hour gusts. Now look at your cloud cover that we've got right now. This is going to be significant for the morning hours. By the time we get to 9, 10, 11 a.m., that's when we will likely move toward that complete sunshine in the forecast. So we've got a lot of sunshine by the p.m. hours, but all through the morning, that's going to be that transitionary period that we're looking out for.